Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Sorry for my four minutes delay. My apologies. Good morning. Already starting late and already late, right? <laughs> Hope you all had coffee. If you didn't, you had some time to get that coffee. Yeah, Megan did. Thank you all for the cameras on. Um, today on schedule, we have FMB. So um, we have food and beverage. We will have a guest speaker joining us at 9 a.m. So the guest speaker will be, let me just quickly this. The guest speaker will be Freddy Zigan, Zigan, Zigan from um, DV. So he's the FMB director. So he has something planned for us. And he will also go through the information on um, COVID protocols. That is something that we didn't get yet. So that will also be part of it. Um, I have some questions. I have some bon dias. Bon dias everyone in the chat group, in the chat. And from Elena, I have, is there a quiz for today? Yes, we have a short quiz, just like the hotel operation quizzes, easy, nothing to be worried about. And for the, um, for the guest lecture of today, the intention is for you to have a small um, review of the, of the, the um, lecture. I did provide some pointers um, on stone. So if you can follow that guideline, then you are ready to go. So um, I had just a few questions before our guest speaker joins in. Did any one of you work in FMB before? Yes, Jayden, you did too, right? Yes. So what? You, you also worked in FMB, right? Yeah, the hotel. Uh, not the hotel, but like at the tour. Okay. No, yeah, FMB in general, so for the hotel and tourism industry. So um, the ones that worked in the in the FMB, so I see there are a lot. I see Amber, Kiwa, Lina. You can also add your own your own experience in your essay, in your essay, or in your essay, no, in your lecture or in the questions with Mr. with Mr. Zidane. So um, that you, it is, it is the intention at the end. Um, if you went through the notes that I gave, is to follow on a recommendation. So the recommendation can also come from guests, for example. So most of you or all of you did visit a um, a restaurant or multiple restaurants before, from which you notice that this is not in theory. This was just presented, but this is something that um, is good. Or on the other way around. This is what I encountered, and this is what should be should be taken care of. So um, usually, as you know, the book has certain guidelines, but that mean that doesn't mean that that is the the guideline. It is more to give you a perception of what it is. And I know that most of you did in, in FMB. If you had the um, shadowing program that was supposed to happen in May, um, everyone would have rotated in that department because it is a let's say a popular department, but at the same time, a department that you learn a lot from. So um, from your end, are there any questions? No, otherwise I can just ask a few things on the discussion questions before we start. Let me, let me quickly take my book. And was it was the working at FMB a positive experience? I'm sorry, teacher. Hello. 
Lisa. Hello. Uh, yeah, teacher. Um, uh, Marina's trying to Just like a moment, talk. I can hear you. Yes. Yes. Uh, Marina was trying to talk. I don't know if she needs to say something. Um. Yeah. Thank you, Alisa. <laughs> yeah. Can okay. Yes, sorry. Yes, now, now I can hear you. Um, oh, okay. okay, yeah, go ahead, Marina. Oh, yeah, teacher, I was um, trying to say if you're going to send us the recorded session of today. I can, I can. I still have the recorded session from Mr. Um, from International Management, from Mr. Figueroa. I can share it with you as well. Okay, thank you. No problem. Yes, um, teacher, I've had um, both negative and positive. Um, I think it depends on the on the places you um, work at. But I've also done, um, I did my internships when I was in EPI um, and I worked at, um, this restaurant doesn't exist anymore. It was Marandi first a long time ago and uh, and then it became i don't remember what it became it was like this fine dining restaurant amuse bistro yes yes but before it was amuse it was marandi and i did my internship there and i was like very young and um, i had a very um, <laughs> excuse me you were younger <laughs> just you're yeah, so young. sorry <laughs> <laughs> yeah no i i worked with um yeah, I work with um, Dutch um, people. I don't have a lot, or I don't have anything against them, but they left me pretty traumatized after that. They were very, um, I don't know. I was working with a bunch of men and it was a fine dining restaurant, which is understandable. Why would they, they would be so intense and tough? But um, I got out of there and I did not finish my internship I went to, um, they moved my internship at um, Occidental. It was Occidental back then. And um, that was as horrible. <laughs> I think it wasn't as horrible, but it was, yeah. So I think there is negative and positive. So yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I did an internship in the f &B department as well. Can I share uh, my sure. experience? Yeah, actually, 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 my internship in the department make me want to work there. Maybe because uh, um, I have such a good experience with the management team that was in charge um, of my internship. I would say, okay. yeah. So that was a very, very. Where, where was that? That was at La Cabana Beach Resort. Okay, and you did F and B in a restaurant or? Uh, no, I think I, I, I did not just restaurant, um, the, um, I would say at the bar and the restaurant, but I work uh, mostly um, in the restaurant. Okay, so the rotation. Yeah. yeah. So you had a real F&B experience in the, in the hotel. Interesting. Anyone else? No? Yeah, I work in the F&B industry also. Uh. I wish it was only intern. That's been a long intern. <laughs> I think you have you you've worked in a lot of um, departments in the in the yes in the, yes right? but yeah but this one is the longest F and B is the longest so far, right? The longest the, the longest department so far seven years. Wow. So yeah, I, I remember I did like five days. Yes. I did like five days um, at a restaurant. I'm not gonna mention which one, and I didn't like it at all. Like I was, I was hostess, but like for the first two or three days that I was trying out, um, I didn't even host. The manager made me um, walk around, pick up um, cutlery, um, tayo, and everything. Go in the back of the kitchen, bring back food for the um, the waiters. And 
she had to basically up and down doing everything that was not hostessing. And only the last two days, um, yeah, buster, that's the word. Only the last two days I was actually hosting when she was not at work and the supervisor was super kind though. And that's when I learned how, I think they used the open table, I'm not sure. And that's where I used um, the computer. I was actually um, putting guests, um, like telling them where, where they're seated. I actually got also an American couple. They were like super cute and old. And she was like, oh my God, I need to take you back with me to New York. Cause we were talking about places um, where we've never been. I was like, no, um, I've never been to New York. She's like, oh my God, you have to come Christmas time. I have a place where you can stay. It was like, you go. And when I told my mom, she's like, uh uh, you ain't going with no stranger. <laughs> but they were like super old and super cute. So I would say like the latter of the days were better than the first three days where I was busting and not doing any hostessing. So yeah. Most, most probably the most people that are used to come to Aruba because that is the behavior of travelers or guests or visitors, what we want to call them, that come to Aruba. They become friends with people yeah. who work in it's, it is bizarre because um, I didn't have that experience either, but I know a lot of people that they become friends and then they do just end up having lunch with these people and visiting them at the hotel and the other way around, yeah, traveling, yeah. traveling back and back and forth to their, to their, um, to their city, to Boston. I know a lot of people that know yeah. people from Boston. I have one that I'm actually friends with on Facebook. Um, she and her husband invited me last year um to come to their hotel they were staying at la cabana but that was right around no, no this year sorry that was like right around the first wave of the pandemic and my mom was like super paranoid because i already like we've gone out with them um me and a friend um she's taking me to orataka we ate pizza we drove around i've shown her like spots on the island that she didn't know about and then when she came back this year, she invited me over to come to the hotel. But like, it was the first wave and my mom was super paranoid. She's like, they're not going there. And then she was like, um, dear, we have to cancel. We're taking also the first flight back home. But next year, we'll see each other again. So she always plans to see me every year. So it's, it's, it's like, um, it's really nice when you have like those, like, although she's like way older, she's like almost 70 already. <laughs> and she has like, um, eight kids or something a lot of grandkids and she also invited me over for christmas because her house i think it's up in north carolina i know somewhere that's cold in the states and she's like we have two spare bedrooms um if your mom won't let you come alone you can come with your mom and i'm like yeah i have like five more siblings so like <laughs> but it's, it's really it's really um it's nice to have like those friends from the states jose you want to say Yes, I would like, to, well, first of all, good morning. Good morning, Jose. Yeah, I would like to say, well, I've been working in the F&B for two years. It has pretty much been, well, I started with two jobs at the same time, two part-times. So I was a boy and like buster, you know. Right now I'm working as a waiter. And I will tell you that in the F&B industry, you always have to be like versatile. You don't only do one thing, even though you could start like a host or a hostess, at the end, you're gonna have to help in the, like in the operation. So that's why maybe the first two, two three days you were as a buster and then you were as a hostess because at the end you need to do a little bit of everything. And in the end, well, I have experienced like bartending, I have been front runner. I have taken people in the door, like as a host. I have taken tables. I've done a little bit of everything. And at the end, I would say you have to be very versatile because every day is different. Every operation is different. And you just have to be doing anything that you have to do for the operation to go good. So that's why you have to be like very versatile. And the, the, um, FMB department or FMB industry, um, you need to be versatile in your time as well because it is not an eight to five job and it is long hours. And I mean, once you finish your degree, you, 
it can be possible that you start as um, in the operation itself, like coordinating before you end up in supervisor. What, what the bachelor degree brings to it is the growth opportunity. So it might be possible even that if you become an FMB supervisor, because we have students here that entered internship as FMB coordinator and are now FMB supervisor becoming managers at um, Marriott. And the growth was fast. But they started as a coordinator in doing the job. There, there were not enough waiters. There they are, waiting, waiting table, cleaning up tables, because you have to be hands-on. It's part of the service of this, this service industry. But what your bachelor degree brings with it is your, your people knowledge, your, how you know people, and at the end, your management skills. So um, like this, this um, student, she, it, she, I think it was two years and she's, she was, uh, she's becoming an FMB manager. So it, it went very fast, but you need to be flexible and know that you, your time, your, the, it's, they say it's scheduling. So it's not eight to five usually in, in the hotel. So it is in morning hours, but sometimes you're scheduled in the afternoon hours. So you are, you need to be flexible on that end and in weekend hours. So um, people that like FMB and I see Olga work in banquets, the same thing. So events, banquets and events like um, high season, it is not about working eight to five. It is about preparing preparing the events, setting up, and of course, the most fun part, yeah? setting up and then dismantling everything, so. Peter, can I add, uh, I hate it, <laughs> because sometimes um, I remember when I started when, at the API, we got up of three to work at different um, hotels, and I went to DB Phoenix, and we started at five. We, we didn't have to uh, put everything together, but we had to break down. Oh my God, the breaking down part is horrible. I think we finished like at six in the morning, like it started at 5 p.m. and we finished the, um, at 6 a.m. to uh, everything. We had to wash dishes, we had to do everything. It was really intense and I was like, whoa. Breaking down, down also means the setting up because you need to break down to set up for another event. I didn't work in events, but I worked preparing events with hotels. So I remember like, for example, we were to the Renaissance, with the Renaissance and there were, we, sometimes we want to have um, dry rums. And they were like, no, you can't now because we have events, we need to set up or we need to break down. Um, sometimes they push you in and you push you through and, or we had events that starts at seven and we, we are allowed to start at, we are allowed to start setting up at three. So it was like, wow. How is this possible? But it is part of the of the training. Let's let's have it like that. So it's it's not something that um, you need to take for granted, but you need to take into consideration that um, events is also part of the F and B component. So it is if you are working in banquets, you're also working in events. So it is a hard, a a tough tough, tough job. So um, you didn't get mice yet, right? You have my next semester. So you will be going through that operation and the practical side as well of setting up an event because you need to work very closely with, with the hotel and the F&B and, and the F &B, um, people. So I'll go quickly to, I see, uh, I'll lower your hand, Jose, QR. I'll go through the hand raise that I have and then we will start with our... Alyssa, you, your hand is raised, but you already... This uh, from previous, right? Or you, you wanted to say something? Yes, okay. We'll go to Keyword and then to Alyssa and then we will start with our session. Keyword? Yes, yeah, so I wanted to say that um, I used to work in the F&B as well um, at the Renaissance in the convention center and also on the Renaissance Island, especially for the weddings and stuff. It used to be fun. It used to be a fun experience because you know, um, I got people intoxicated. I was a bartender, and you know, you have fun. You you talk, you socialize, get to know new people. But it is long hours, though. It is long hours. Um, and at that time, I used to work. I was working at the airport, so I was working two jobs. So sometimes I would leave from the airport, um, fresh up, go to work till five in the morning, come back, go to the airport, 
so Adri needs to Adri needs to have weekend sometimes, but I couldn't keep it up for that long. Only like six months, and then I couldn't I couldn't continue to work because it was too much. But it is a fun experience, of course. All depends where you go, but it's a it's a nice experience um, to have. Yeah. Um, Alyssa. Um, yes, I just wanted to add to what Laura said, Laura, Laura said, and um, I worked as well in banquets when um, at, at Radisson, um, now it's Hilton. Um, I worked New Year's, I worked during the period where um, it was holidays, and yeah, sometimes we had to break down to set up for a um, a, a, an event the next morning which was early in the morning and it would be like 300 people in a ballroom for the next morning and we just break down a 250 packs event and it's a, it's very um intense um labor intense and um i was i was yeah i started working there that was my first job and i also worked um new new year's new year's yeah new year's eve and new year's and so i don't know it was a very nice um experience but i like events so i would do it all over again so that's my yeah i would do it all over again so people that work in banquet that is also part of fmb so if you read through the powerpoint presentation you would have read through it so it is the operation component once you get with Ms. Jo um, in the spring semester, you'll talk more about um, preparing the project management and management the, managing the events. But um, all in all, it is all incorporated together. So um, I will start by presenting Mr. Freddy Zidane. He's the FMB director of DV. He will introduce himself. Um, and I will what I can say is that once you hear his story, it will motivate you because he has had, he had, he's young, I would have to say that he's young and he's, he has his, his experience in f &B. So um, for the ones that are, if you see Freddie, and most of them, a lot of them, more than a half of the class have worked in f &B one way or the other so they have that experience so as they follow through follow with you on on your presentation we will go back to a q a to create a discussion and questions and everything that you can share so freddy welcome and thank you for okay. taking your time to to yeah to teach us some things about the fmb in the practical world all right thank you Sven. Uh, uh, first of all, bon dia, everybody. Um, I'm happy to be part of your class today and um, happy that you guys are passing through FMB. And I just heard some banquets, uh, um, anecdotes from you guys, which I love it. Banquet is also part of my life and actually one of my favorite parts of, on food and beverage. And uh, I normally, like uh, some of your comments were there, uh, you put your heart, your soul, your blood, everything in banquets but you still love it. And uh, it's amazing, it's amazing. Um, so then I'm gonna share the screen for a second and I have a- yeah, Sure, I, I opened it, so if, if you, can, you can go ahead. So it is, it is open to All share. Right. Okay. For, for the students that have questions, you can use the chat box. So if you have questions that you wanna start with, you can use the chat box, otherwise we will do the Q&A after. All right, so like uh, I said, my name is um, Freddy Sedan. Um, I'm the director of food and beverage for the DV Tamarain All-Inclusive in, here in Aruba. Um, I also manage uh, another restaurant that is not part of the um, All-Inclusive program, which is Fusion, a uh, restaurant wine and piano bar. It's located at the Alhambra. Actually, I'm here right now. <laughs> and um, I also manage the ballroom at the Alhambra. Um, I started in f &B when I was 18 years. So right now I have 18 years in the industry. So I'm 36 years old. Um, I started in banquet department. So I think that is why that is one of my passions because that was my early beginning. So I started as a um, helping cleaning tables and, and um, setting up uh, ballrooms 
um, boats, you know, like I remember that those times I work also for the Marriott, they have a, a sunset cruise um, twice a week. And every day we needed to take, or every week we needed to take everything out from the ballroom, ship it to, you know, in a truck to the um, higher tier, set up a complete um, boat and then do a sunset cruise and then do the everything back again and have like nothing happen in there. So um, yeah, it was uh, fun times in, in there. So um, then um, I work in restaurants also. I started, um, I did runner's work. I, then I did, um, server, bar back, bartender. Um, I help it out in different outlets in the hotels throughout um, the day. Um, um, yeah, pretty much I pass through every, every um, department in FMB before I get where, uh, where I am at this moment. Um, I became a, a supervisor right after my studies. I studied at the EPI here in Aruba. Um, as soon as I did my internship the, in those times, um, Westing hired me right away as a beverage manager. Um, I worked for them until a couple of months before they closed. And uh, in those times, DV said, hey, I have a new challenge for you. Are you ready to take it? And uh, they were going to open the Alhambra outlets, which was um, Ginger, um, Fusion, and the Ballroom. So I was uh, in charge of those three outlets, uh, outlets as a supervisor. And uh, I needed to set up the complete thing. So from um, the, the bars, the restaurants, the menus, um, how we were gonna promote it, how will the, the, the crowd take, take the wine bar concept, you know, entertainment, how do we do it? So um, I think this was uh, uh, one of the strongest um, um, builds that I have on my career because I needed to set up this from scratch pretty much. So um, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of work, but um, I enjoy it, which was the, the, the most important part. You need to enjoy what you are doing, right? Um, let me tell you a little bit about the hotel. Um, yeah, as I said, um, I work with uh, Vivian Tamarain All Inclusive. We have um, 504 rooms in total in both hotels, um, which give you more or less a thousand plus guests in house daily. Um, let's talk pre-COVID because right now the occupancy is different, but um, yeah, we had, uh, we, I think our maximum last year was a thousand six hundred guests in house daily, which as an all inclusive, you need to feed them for, um, breakfast, lunch, dinner, you know, we had multiple outlets to take care of that and um, multiple employees to take care of that too. We have a really nice gym. I put the picture of the gym because I think that's the best way to lose weight. You know, you have that amazing view and um, it's not Photoshop. That's the view of the gym that we have in DV. Um, yeah, we have the kids center, we have business center, um, which make everything easier for our guests to print their their tickets or the boarding passes. And if so, most of our guests also come um, while they're still working. So um, they always need a place to print something or to uh, access the internet and, you know, do what they need to do to make it happen. Um, yeah, our activities department is actually pretty big. Uh, we do a lot of the activities that other hotels will charge you for we do it completely at uh, no cost as we are uh, all inclusive. So we have tours, um, bike tours that bring you to the lighthouse. Right now we just bought, uh, I think it was something like uh, 75 new electric bikes. Um, so we have the option, the guests will always choose if they want an electric mount mountain bike or they would like to just have a um, regular mountain bike and do the exercise. Um, yeah, we have over, wedding departments with, um, we get, I think around 80 to 90 weddings a year um, in the hotel for all inclusive and being part of the all inclusive, they get a special deal on their ceremony and reception. So um, we do in rooms revenue through weddings, more than one point we, we used to do before COVID, um, in room revenue, more or less 1.5 million dollar in rooms revenue through weddings department. 
So it was it is a really important um, income for the hotel. Um, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so um, in food and beverage, I managed a total of 350 employees. This is including kitchen staff. Um, I have uh, in service, I have a total of um, 13 managers and supervisors who help me make it happen day to day. This is service and bars and in kitchen, I have uh, five more supervisors and an executive chef on top of that. So between the executive chef and myself, we make sure that both hotels have the, um, their operations will run smoothly, you know, and make sure that our guests are satisfied and um, that yeah, we take care of everything that uh, needs to be done. Uh, we have a total of seven all-inclusive restaurants, 10 bars. Um, one, one of the restaurants was the buffet, which now we are due to COVID, we are not allowed to, to have a buffet set up anymore. So we needed to restructure everything and make it in a way that we follow the protocols, but the guests still get that experience of a buffet. So we came with a live cooking restaurant set up. Um, we have the a la carte restaurants, the pizza bars. Yeah, we have regular bars. And like I said, we manage also the Alhambra Room, Fusion and Wine Piano, piano Bar. Um, these are the restaurants. So if you go from the top left, you have, uh, this is Pure Lime. This is Mexican um, restaurant. Um, I don't know if any of you have been on the hotel before or passed by, you, you know. Um, so this is this restaurant is um, our latest um, restaurant we built um, and is completely Mexican oriented. Our chef in there is a Mexican lady called Lisette. Um, she came on the island seven to eight years ago. And uh, when we said, okay, let's open this uh, Mexican restaurant, we hired her as a executive sous chef. And um, any Mexican person who will come to the restaurant will say, I feel like my grandmother is cooking. You know, it's really real Mexican cuisine, not like um, Taco Bell. And, and this is really deep inside Mexico, grandmama cooking food. So it's a really unique um, um, restaurant. Uh, there are a couple on the island, but for all inclusive, you know, quality of the food is high and um, service also. We do pretty much around 150 to 170 people a night. Um, the second one in the middle is our um, Kunuku Terrace, which this restaurant is um, one of the buffets. Right now we're renovating it as the Tamarain Hotel is still closed due to COVID. Um, so we renovated it and we are changing it to the um, live cooking setup also. I will show you later on a video of, le, of the like, live cooking setup and so you get an idea how, how it changed from a buffet style that you pick up your own food to we serve you and we follow these new protocols and we keep the social distancing and all that uh, requirements. Um, then you have the Red Parrot. Red Parrot we, is our signature restaurant is the, the one on the top right on your screen. And um, we renovated it two years ago. We invested more or less uh, in the renovation around $300,000 renovated and maybe a little bit more. And we do daily, we used to do around 250 to 300 people having dinner there. This one op only opens for dinner. I'm um, sorry, the Kukunuku Terrace, the one in the middle, open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Then on the bottom um, left side of your screen, you have the Paparazzi. This is the Italian-oriented um, restaurant. Um, completely Italian cuisine. And this is one of our, it's really pop popular with our tourists. They really enjoy going there. Uh, we have more or less 250, to 300 sometimes a night, yes. So um, it's a lot of turnover in all these restaurants. Um, Ginger is uh, actually my personal favorite. This one is um, Asian cuisine. Um, our chef from this restaurant is actually, um, we have a Chinese um, chef and we have a Filipino chef. 
So um, their combination in the kitchen is amazing. This restaurant does around 190 people. And it actually um, is only those two cooks that serve this restaurant. So I always say that it's unbelievable how these two chefs can make sure that 190 people a night get the food on time, no delays, and everything is being made fresh. So it's not, uh, nothing is pre-cooked in none of our restaurants. So it's a, always a challenge, but it's amazing to see how this can be done with them. Um, on the right um, of your screen, you see the palm grill. This is a hibachi style restaurant that guests cook their own food. So we have some stainless steel tables with heats in the, in the middle. We, have, we normally put a, a Teflon a mat. So everybody who sits there get a new Teflon mat and they can cook on, on top of the table so the middle will heat. So we serve from uh, meats to salmon to poultry, um, side dishes also they don't need to cook mostly the meats they, they do themselves so if you come with your family let's say or four or six people you sit there you get the raw meats you cook it yourself and um, it's a really nice experience and actually this restaurant is located right on the beach so you see the amazing sunset that the island offers so um, it's a really beautiful restaurant and it, I don't know if you see the turtle on the on the screen but um this is um was this image was made made by lion Kier, which is one of the best 3d um painters actually in the world he came to aruba a couple of times and we brought him in just to paint that um that turtle for us um this is the pelican terrace reset up after COVID with the live cooking um line let me just play this video one second see if it goes let me go let me know if it goes please We can't we can't see it. We we can listen to the song, but we can't we can't see the video. The video needs to be shared. Okay, let me try to like do you're it. You're sharing the the screen now. You need to share that that screen. So you need. Okay. To All right. Let me just go there. One second. Yes. Um. One second, trying to get there. Hmm. Let me share. Yes. Yes. You got it? Okay. Let me just go there.
Okay, so um, as you see, we changed everything. So before the guests used to um, take their own food, like uh, where you see the plants on the, on the screen. Um, this used to be uh, where the guests will pick up their food. And we did have the action stations before, but um, those stations were, um, yeah, we cook uh, a la minute, but it was limited. Right now we enhance it that uh, we offer pretty much the same variety that we had before, but um, um, pretty much everything being made a la minute. So yes, it does take a little bit longer, but you get a higher quality of food at the same time. And um, we yeah, reinvented the whole design of the restaurant and we were able to, to, to yeah, succeed with this concept. Um, we, of course, every time um, we adjust because we were inventing the wheel with this one. You know, it's nothing we did in the past and there are not many restaurants that have it like this in this, uh, at this moment on the island. So um, as our occupancy grow, we adjust what we need to adjust to, to make sure we can offer still the service at a fast um, uh, time, no? So the guest doesn't need to wait as long as um, it will normally take. Um, let's see, yes. Some of the um, other responsibilities that I have as a food and beverage director is um, I'm in charge of budget, cost control, menu development, strategies. Um, yeah, guest satisfaction is one of the biggest one. Um, I always need to, well, me, not only me, but my team and I need to be always thinking outside of the box, how we make it happen, like with this concept from the buffet. And um, yeah, um, we need to make it happen. You know, like my boss said, it doesn't matter how long it takes you to make it happen or how long it takes you to do your job. Just make sure it gets done. And, and that is the mentality that we have. You know, we always go the extra mile and um, we make the best out of it. You know, it's, uh, we have a goal in mind and we all work towards this goal as a company, as a team. Um, yeah, some of the um, COVID protocols, let me show you a, not a small video. Let me just open it and share the screen one more time. This is a little bit more, a little bit of what we're doing in the, in the whole company. So let me just um, show you one second. All right, uh, you guys can see the screen, right? Yes.
So um, these are some of the protocols that we have in place in there. And um, yeah, let me talk about a little bit, a little bit about COVID-19 in food and beverage. Um, remember those times when um, the whole island was on shelter in place. We were not really allowed to, to go outside unless it's necessary. Well, while everybody was at home, um, my team and I were pretty much here working and trying to see how we can convert food and beverage department to be ready for our next um, customers. So we spent pretty much most of the time here at the, at, on the hotel um, brainstorming with the executive team and the manager, managers. How are we gonna make this happen? How will the occupancy be? How can we change it up? Um, and um, it was uh, quite extensive meetings, long days, and um but we we yeah we committed to make it happen and that was the key we were committed to come with alternative and even though we didn't knew a lot about covid yet um for it was um for all of all of us it was something new and um we we started learning and researching and um, how can we avoid it how can we um, prevent the service um, and you know, like the changes in, after we opened the hotel in July, um, changes in operations were drastic. You know, we, like I said, we used to have a thousand plus people in house and suddenly we opened with 40. So yeah, guess what? I have 350 employees working in food and beverage and you really don't need 350 employees to do 40 covers a day. So, um, it was uh, challenging, uh, really, how to make um, schedules so everybody get the chance to work. We had uh, weeks that staff would come one or two days per employee, so everybody get a little bit and are able to come. I'll also make their tips. You know, we we think about all this stuff. It's not only just oh, you just put you on a schedule or you can stay home for a month and then you stay home for a month. I think uh, with the economical situation on the island, um, as you know, most of the servers, bartenders, some of the cooks even, um, they really rely on their tips, you know, and this went completely down. So we needed to find a way to get a balance that everybody comes to work and everybody have a chance to make their own money also, you know, and beside, well, yeah, we pay 80% um, and so far we didn't let nobody go. We keep every single employees that we had in house uh, from all departments. Uh, we did stop with outside labor, but you know, that's normal. Um, but we actually told them, we let them go with a promise that at the moment that we need them, those same employees, if they're available, they will come back to us. We are not gonna look for new ones. We are gonna look for the ones that used to work with us in the past. So that was a promise we made to them and we're gonna fulfill that promise. Um, in service, we did a lot of changes. Um, uh, in the past, in the restaurants, you used to have um, 
one server per station and and right now um is it, we did changes not only to um prevent infection from gas to amplogy but also to prevent amplogy to amplogy transmission so um we divided completely the service into um different areas we have persons uh, people that are actually only doing one task so this person will only serve beverage for example um, this other person reset up all the tables this one take orders and this one brings um, the food another one will clean up the tables so um, in doing this first we um, limited the um, conversations in the kitchen between employees and um, that everybody if let's say this guest pretty much everybody who's in the hotel when they come they do the test actually so we know that they are negative but you don't know what happens in between so we treat everybody as as they 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 could have it you know so we make sure that all, all of our employees have their mouth cap they have gloves you saw on the on the videos and uh, we sanitize every single station. Um, if somebody comes to this table and have a dinner, as soon as they stand up, we sanitize the whole table. First, we fuck the, the rooms, you know, with the uh, special machines. You saw one of them sanitizing the, the pool beds um, with one of these uh, machines. Um, we do the same with the room. So we, we really try to make it as best as possible, but without influencing the experience of our customers. So for them, they see that we're taking precautions, but we are not changing their, their, their experience. So they still feel that, wow, this is, um, I feel I'm, I'm on vacation and this is the comment we get a lot from them, right? Um, so we did a lot of changes in service bars and everywhere we put some um, um, dividers also in the restaurants. Um, we reduce our table capacity with more than 50% because you need to have the 1.5 meter distance between table and table, um, you know, and um, this hit us actually quite big because um, now the occupancy is growing. We, right now our occupancy today is 44%. And um, now the, ta the tables and the chairs in the um, live cooking station is limited. So um, in the last three days, what we did is we opened um, our uh, hallway, let me put it that way, between the live cooking restaurant at the DV and the Red Parrot. So um, the guests can also go and have breakfast at the Red Parrot, but having the food from the live cooking station. So again, we needed to really look on a way how, how can we still add tables, but without jeopardizing the protocols from David Hay. Um, yeah, you have a uh, protocol for employees and protocols for, for service. So one of the protocols for employees is that every single employee that comes into the kitchen for us, um, they need to wash their hand, do the temperature check. They need to do the sanitizer. This need to be locked. We have a COVID uh, protocol coordinator on property that will make sure that this happens to every single employee who goes through the kitchen. Our employees are not allowed to enter the restaurants from the guest entrance to avoid anything, any of this. So if they go out 10 times through the kitchen, 10 times they need to follow this protocol, you know. And um, uh, last time we got inspection, actually we got uh, in total almost 10 inspections already from David Hay, uh, including the ones to get the golden seal, but they keep coming. And the latest one, they said that they will make, um, they ask us if we can participate making a video uh, so they can use our protocols as an example to put in their um, Facebooks and, and, and do promotion with it. Of course, we agree. So they're busy doing that in, I think, the next upcoming weeks. And um, as you know, most of the guests that come will do the pre-test pre at the airport. So most of these guests will come to the hotel and be in quarantine for a couple of hours. Sometimes it's one day normally less than a day though and uh we didn't have a room service department which we needed to create it because if this guest guest is not allowed to leave the room he still need to eat he want if he wants to drink he can drink so uh we created this uh, room service department where we are able to host the guests 
um, they get a, let's call it a, a amenity box where they have some soda, some beers also, some chips, some small stuff. And then they can, in there you have a QR code and they can scan it, get the menu from the room service department or even they can call any of the restaurants and say, no, I wanna eat from the Red Potter today. And um, they will get food from any of these available restaurants at the time. Um, so uh, this help a lot actually to, for the guest satisfaction because um, most of them will say something like, hey, I'm paying for all inclusive, but I'm not allowed to go to the bar and have a drink. So yeah, they, they really appreciate it. Yeah, most of our hot, uh, hotel guests, let's say 80% are repeat guests. So they knew we didn't have it. So they were concerned how will we approach this situation. And um, it went good. Um, we, for us, it worked out and for them also. So yeah, that was a, a good, um, a good add-on for our customer satisfaction. All right, and one more. Yes, so thank you. And uh, I think you guys, hopefully you guys enjoy the presentation. And if you have any questions, um, feel free to ask. Thank you, Fanny. Thank you so much. It was, um, I, I mean, it's not ex as extensive as as if we would walk the premises, but hopefully soon we will be able to get that opportunity. Um, but thank you very much. Um, we have a few questions. So I'll start with the questions and then I'll go to the chat box. So anyone that wants to continue, we, you can either put it in the chat box and I'll read through it, but we'll start first with Jean. Jean had a, a question, Jean? Um, since you say um, the um, guest lecturer said that um, right after he graduated from EPI, so he got the, the, the opportunity, and I would like to ask him that he got the opportunity to work as the supervisor, or was it because of his degree or because of um, the experiences? Because I know most of the time they, in the restaurant business, they would go with someone um, with um, experience instead of uh, the degree. So I would like to know if it was a combination of both or was mainly because of his degree. Um, I think it was a combination of both. And actually, I'm pretty sure it was because um, like I said, I started working when I was 18 years old in the food and beverage department. And um, I went, uh, I worked pretty much in most of the areas. And at the moment I did my internship with them. Um, I always try to be as best as I can and I always try to, to succeed and, and do more. So uh, I think at that moment, Weston appreciated that. And I did uh, quite some projects with them um, in that period. And um, as soon as, uh, honestly, I, um, they didn't even wanna, wanted me to go to my graduation. They said, you start tomorrow. I'm like, no, let me start, uh, do my graduation. Um, one more day for, um, you know, you know what happened after the graduation. And uh, then I start the next day. So actually two days after my graduation, I, I, was, um, I was already on duty punching in into the Westing. And it was not as a supervisor, it was as a beverage manager. Okay, so, but would you still get the job even if you didn't have the degree? Um, I'm not sure. If, if you ask me if in my position, I will give um, an employee of a person the position of supervisor without any degree, I will tell you yes. The reason why is because um, I, I want to see what people can actually put on the table. And um, if you work with me, uh, let's say part-time or, or, or in banquets, and I see you have a potential, I try to take that potential as much as I can um, together with you, and I, I try to grow you. You know, even, um, I ha you know, I have changed people from departments, um, housekeeping became servers, this server became supervisor at the, at the last, or his banquet, uh, he's a beverage uh, supervisor right now, um, people from storeroom, you know, I, I, one of the main, for me, one of the most important thing is you need to be um, 
eager to learn, you need to be committed, you know, and your attitude. The attitude is one of the most important um, areas that I look into it. You know, you can have all the degrees, but if you don't have the right attitude, then, you know, it's not going to be a nice journey. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, John. Um, have Amber that had a question as well? Yes, good morning. Um, great presentation. I put two questions in the chat box, but I just wanted to ask you this one. Maybe it's a personal question, but what attracted you to the food and beverage industry? So why did you choose to go in this industry? Yeah, um, I actually was, um, before I started in food and beverage or in actually in hospitality in general, I was an economic student and I oh. was really good in economics. So that was one of my strongs in those times. And um, I started working as a part-timer in food and beverage just to get some more money in my pocket. And um, I remember my first job, um, one, I was in the, in the movies one night and one friend just came to me and said, hey, you need a job? I'm like, no, why? Said, oh, I need a server for tomorrow and I need somebody early. And I'm like, well, I'm there, no problem. What do I need to dress? Never done that in my life. But um, this opened my ways because I enjoy it so much. And um, yeah, it became my passion. Food and beverage became my passion. So I stay there. I changed my studies to hospitality then. And um, I never regret it. You know, this is, it, it was a really, it is so far and continue to be a really nice journey. And it, it is my passion and there is nothing bad. And it's the most amazing feeling to do what you are passionate of. And you still get paid for. Correct. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you, Amber. Um, you? Yes, good morning. I had a question. Um, my question was when you said you did a renovation of 300,000. I want to ask what your decision process was specifically for restaurant renovations. How do you go about that? Well, um, can you repeat the question one more time, please? I got half of it. But... Uh, so what is your decision process when doing restaurant renovations? So um, pretty much um, we sit in a committee, let's start by there. And um, the year before we normally say, okay, what are we gonna do in the next year? So this is at the moment that we make budgets and we make forecasts and all that stuff. And um, we make the decision of renovating the restaurants um, due of um, guest satisfaction, um, the need of uh, improving our services and the quality of our service and um, yeah, uh, sometimes the building also needed. So, um, yeah, so what we do is uh, we said the, the, some years before or months before some cases, we come with a budget. Um, this budget is, we send it to our corporate department to actually direct it to the owner of the hotel. And um, yeah, he will, he will approve or disapprove. And the way we do every single budget that we do of any request that we bring to the owner, we approach multiple companies on the island. We get, uh, let's say from everything we need to do to make the renovation or to make the changes, we get three different quotes from three different companies, right? And at that moment, we, um, we send all three of them with our comments and suggestions from, from each one of them. So we say, okay, um, company number one have the best deal, but they're, um, um, uh, how, you say, how you say that? The, the, if, if something happens with the construction, then they're not st standing behind the, the guarantee. Or the other one have a five years um, guarantee or, you know, so we always look at all these small details and uh, we suggest at the end, oh, this is our preferred company or this one. And um, yeah, then we, we, we go for it. Um, then we pass through the same um, steps, choosing uh, furniture, tables, um, uh, if we're going to change uniforms uh, to match the new concept, um, who will do the, be the designer and all this stuff. So it's uh, quite a long process, 
but at the moment it starts, pretty much you have everything ready. But something important that you need to have in mind is that um, having an occupancy of a thousand and plus gas, um, we do all of our renovations without closing the outlets. So we work through nights and uh, we disappear part of the restaurants in one night. We put barriers, we put plants, so they don't see what, was gonna, what is going on in that moment, but the restaurant stays open. So um, it's always a challenge and uh, some people come last night and they saw the restaurant completely full and they saw a whole bunch of tables and tomorrow, oh, 30 tables disappear and you have a barrier with plants and like nothing happened. And two days later, that part is open and some other parts are closed. Uh, we did the same with the um, Kunuku Terrace Buffet. Um, this was the biggest challenge I, I had in, uh, through renovations in the hotel. This one cost us a million dollars. And uh, it's a, uh, yeah, uh, Su Suan was there a couple of, uh, I think a year ago. And uh, it's a, year, it's a, it's a, yeah, it's a art, it's a piece of art, like beautiful restaurant. And um, we renovated completely, completely without even closing the hotel and without getting one complaint. So that was amazing because we, right beside the restaurant, you have, the, you have rooms and they were drilling. We moved up, uh, the palm grill was inside of the Kunuku Terrace and we completely moved it to the front by the beach front. And uh, they were drilling, they were breaking stuff. We run new, complete new electricity, redesigned the whole thing, air codes, um, we did it all. And without closing the restaurant at all. And uh, yeah, so the, some guests were saying, you guys are magicians. I don't know how you guys do this, you know? And um, yeah, it's, it's good to hear their feedback. And uh, it's a complete experience. And uh, it, for, for me in that time, I was, um, I only had, a, I think, a year working as a food and beverage director in that time. And it was my first biggest renovation. So I was like, wow, <laughs> but we did it. We make it happen. So again, it's a team effort. It's not only me, it's, it's my whole team. Everybody, the servers, you know, sometimes they needed to do bigger rounds just to get to the bar because that area was closed and, and they make it happen. You know, we are a team, we work together. Um, they were inf informed what was gonna change, when was gonna change. We, we follow guidelines, we follow timelines. So um, everybody was on the same page. Yeah, I, I hope I answered your question. I think I talked a little bit too. Yes, you answered that perfectly. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Freddy. Um, Marie? Yes, um, before the COVID, the COVID, so to feed so many people, I know you have to purchase a lot of food. So how do you manage purchasing and storage of this food and how do you do it now? Okay, so um, we, uh, before COVID, again, yeah, we had all these people to feed and they all meal periods and all that. Um, we buy um, containers. Actually, we, we have a mixed balance, a healthy mixed balance between uh, buying local and buying abroad. You know, a certain moment we need to ensure that our quality is is presented in the restaurant. So for some products that run out on the island on a faster um, base due to consumption of, of the locals, um, these products we normally buy abroad. We have a huge warehouse with um, three coolers, three walk-in coolers um, and two walk-in freezers. Uh, we have a dry storage, um, normally it's like, uh, Imagine the size of, half of the size of Pricemar is over, is over dry storage, pretty much. And the uh, same height. And uh, same for beverage, we do the same. So we buy, we used to buy abroad and local. At this moment, since COVID started, we wanted to um, actually motivate the local economy. So since we open, we only buy local. We are not buying abroad. So this, yes, it does affect a little bit on, on our um, variety in the restaurants, 
because you know in the islands sometimes you don't get uh, this product or that product but we always find a replacement so um, I'm gonna give you an example um, what can I say if we have um, shawarma on the buffet uh, today but there is no shawarma available on the island then we do a tenderloin you know and stuff like that so People normally, let's say on a Tuesday, will spec the shawarma, but they will understand that, yeah, it's not available on the island. So yeah, they put a tenderloin instead of. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, we decided since we opened, we motivate the local economy. We are not buying abroad at this moment. Okay, thank you for your answer. All right. Uh, I'm sorry to just tag along on that question. Did, does that impact your budget? To buy local? Like, huge, a lot. Um, we had a budget of uh, for food of sixteen dollar per person per day. Um, when we opened, we finished our month first month actually with fifty dollar per person per day, only on food. So for from fourteen to fifty. Well, wow. so it was uh, dramatic, even though that we make a lot of deals with local companies. So we reduce prices, but um, the comparison between what we pay for a product abroad and what we pay for it on the island is, is a huge difference. So, yeah. and we were spewed with a live cooking buffet who also created some, um, uh, quite some spoilage. And um, this also affects our costs automatically. So, um, yeah, it was a challenge. At this moment, we have it under control. We know how to, how, how to prepare, how much to prepare. Every, pretty much everything is done a laminate. So we reduce the spoilage. Um, we make bigger deals for long term with local companies. This also reduce our expenses. And um, yeah, I'm not telling you that we went back to, to the budget that we had for per person, but we are not that far from it anymore. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Freddie. Um, Dorsham? Yes, good morning. Great presentation. Um, if and when everything comes back to normal, this COVID crisis situation, um, would you go back to the conventional way of doing business with your restaurant or would you stick to the ways that you have changed up now? And as any of these, um, have any of these ways make, um, since me let you see that um wow uh we're doing way better using this situation than with the conventional situation which would you go back to would you go back to the conventional way would you stick to some of the oh, um the new ways now how, how do you see it as covid um make that shift and um open our eyes and visions and innovations in in this time i think i will try to look for a balance in the middle because a lot of the changes we did um, were for best. Um, I'm, I'm going to give you an example. I was never a fan of uh, the bu buffet setup. Um, even though it's easier for everybody, the guests grab his own food. Um, I'm never a fan of it. You know, I, I prefer to provide a higher quality meat and everything cook a la minute. So um, I will stay, let's say on the buffet side, I will stay with the same um, ways we have. Um, at this moment, after COVID, or through COVID, let me put it that way. But um, on other sides, um, a lot of other stuff were influenced by COVID, like entertainers. You know, so um, at this moment, we don't have any entertainment at the hotel. There is no much uh, budget to, to, to do that. So we do our own entertainment, our um, activities. Um, uh, staff is doing DJ, they're doing uh, whatever they can to entertain our customers, right? So this is a part that will for sure go back to it, but this is more on budget side. So, but um, amount of tables in the restaurants, yeah, it reduced a lot. Like for me um, at Fusion, we only had uh, four, seven, let's say 12, 13 tables and half of them I cannot use them anymore. So this is limiting my capacity. You know, so yes, um, that 1.5 meter distance did affect us in Fusion. But we found a way, and actually I can tell you at this moment, we are selling in Fusion 80% of our regular sales, which is amazing. 
I think we are one of the busiest restaurants on the island at this moment. And uh, Fusion, well, actually, I never took out the entertainments, even though when we were, we were not allowed, I, I look for a way, I think outside of the box, and I don't know if you guys follow Fusion Facebook or have you seen the live streaming, but at the moment that they start with live entertainment on the island, what I did is I, in the Alhambra ballroom, I set up a studio setup. I put some uh, cameras and we went live. So what we did is we live streamed the entertainers playing um, and put cameras in Fusion so the entertainer can also see Fusion and hear Fusion and uh, put some TVs in Fusion and they were like they were here, but not here. So we look for a way in there, but um, yeah, so I will change some of the stuff that were forced to, to be changed by COVID and some of the other ones I will leave them. You know, I will, I, I will, I will find a balance between them, uh, honestly. I think not everything that happened through COVID was bad. Some things needed to happen. All right, hope I have answered your question. Yeah, yes, you did, thank you. Um, I'll go through the questions in the chat box. I have from Josie here. What is the hardest part of your job that you have most difficulty in dealing with? People, budget. <laughs> um, at this moment, I will say the COVID protocols okay. because everything changed by day. <laughs> so you change something and then two days later, they change it back. Or they just show up and they say, oh, by the way, you needed this. I said, it's not in none of the protocols. It will come next week. <laughs> so we are like, oh, let's change it again. Um, so um, at this moment, I will say just um, following David Hay because they change everything by day and um, not all the rules are, are written in stone the right way. So like right now they're shutting places down because of the level of uh, loudness of the music but nobody says what is the daisy bell. So yeah. it is based on assumptions. So yeah. if, the, if the person say that the music was loud, then you got a fine, but maybe it was not loud. Maybe he, you know, so this is, you cannot base rules like that on assumptions. You really need to have it on black mm -hmm. and white. You can play to 70, 80 daisy bells. Higher than that, you will get a fine. Yeah. Stuff like that. But, um, Bayside COVID, I would say the hardest part is, yeah, even though I, sometimes I do enjoy them, is the longest days. Um, normal, before COVID, I was pretty much doing 8 a.m. till 8, 8.30 p.m. So I was pretty much living in the, in the hotel. Um, but uh, after COVID, I changed my habits a little bit, and I'm trying to like um, go home a couple of times during the day, have lunch with my family, come back, um, spend more time there. So before that, I think the long, the hardest part was the long days. Yeah. Yeah. So that is something we touched as well um, prior to to the lecture was that you to work in F and B you need to be flexible because the times are different. It's not an office job from eight to five or eight to six. It is long hours, um, night shifts, and as mentioned in banquets, um, the responsibility, the job needs to be done. So it's about breaking down and setting up. So um, thank you. Let's move. That is correct, 100%. And uh, pretty much with, uh, as soon as you finally get home, you took a shower, you jump into the bed, and you still have restaurants running, and people will call you. Yeah. So I, I even got calls at 1 a.m., 2 a.m. in the morning. Hey, this is happening and I need to wake up and run to the hotel. It's my responsibility. I'm in charge of the outlets. So, uh, yeah, it's part of my duties. I have here from Jayan, how do you prevent and catch employees who steal? We do a lot of meetings. Uh, sorry, repeat, repeat the with how stealing. How do you prevent and catch employees who steal? Okay, so um, we have catch quite some, and uh, you know we have a long operation. Not the, it's really large, so we start from the Alhambra and we end up almost uh, yeah by by the rotunda close to Lingon Song. So it's difficult to have all areas covered, but uh, we talk to them a lot. We uh, really do pre shift meetings and we document all this stuff, and we tell them, listen, you are really gonna lose your job for a glass of. 
fear, you know, and some people still try it. And um, sadly enough, a couple of weeks ago, I, we, we catch one. Was so drunk, she could not even stand. Um, due to the whole economical situation on the island, we actually didn't let her go. Even though she had a record of, let's say, drinking and stealing alcohol on the job. But uh, we sent it to, to um, a, a, a sessions. We, we really put a, a complete uh, paperwork together with her, which she agreed. And next often she will get fired at that moment. But um, we really talk a lot to the staff. We use a lot of examples of things that are going on. And um, we try to really put it in their brains that that is not the way to go. Yeah. But it did happen and it did happen quite sometimes and actually too many, too many times. And a lot of people lose their job because of it. Uh, we give chances and sometimes we say, you know, we told you so. And yeah, there is nothing we can do at that moment. We need to act. Yes. Trust. Feeling, feeling. Dailan is asked, there are many restaurants around Ruba that have a local special or dollar to Florine. Many you know because of the current pandemic to help promote locals to eat at a restaurant. Is it a strategy that DV is using or with the restaurants? So you're managing only one restaurant that yeah, is well, local. Normally, okay, normally um, the locals were able to eat at our all inclusive restaurant. They could buy a ticket and they were able to go there and eat. Um, it was never a strong business for us because we, we focus mostly on our um, hotel guests. At this moment, because of the low amount of um, table capacity, we are not, allowed, we are not able to, to host people from outside of the hotel. Like I said, we are breaking our heads how to increase the amount of tables to just um, be able to host our own guests at the, the event of the DV hotel. Um, but at Fusion, we do. We have, uh, since we um, opened it back in July, we have a 25% discount for locals. And we never stopped it. I saw some other of the other restaurants, as soon as they open for the American market, they say, no more special for locals. Uh, we never did that. So we still have it on and we'll stay on until we think it's necessary. Okay. So um, yeah, we keep it there. Um, Jillian asked, what happens if a guest is tested positive for COVID? There are protocols from um, the FAK in place and there are protocols from the hotel in place that um, as soon as this person check in, actually, um, since he comes into the hotel, there are protocols that are being followed. Um, he goes to, to the front desk, he checks in, he goes to his room directly escorted by our bellman. And as soon as he gets the, the positive um, result, uh, which so far, it didn't happen with us yet. None of our guests has test, tested positive since we opened. Um, then um, we will, David Hay will contact us or he will contact directly our general manager. And David Hay will come in a special transportation um, um, car and uh, will move the hotel, uh, the guests out of the, the hotel and bring it to an isolated uh, location, which normally is not disclosed. And um, for their family, if they have family, um, they will also be um, going with the with the DVK and they will be in quarantine until they test it negative. If they test negative, they will come back to the to the hotel. Um, I have here a question from Dorshan. You mentioned that you kept everyone on that were on payroll. Having all the staff on payroll, um, how did you manage manage companies company budget? Well, we are getting the 60% paid by, by um, Estra Bay. So the, the, what the government is helping all the companies. So we are paying the 20% and the employees give off 20%. So we, we are at 80% um, salary. So including myself, um, pretty much everybody on the island on, on hospitality is, is doing 80% salary at this moment. So um, yeah, it's a balance, no? We still have, a, right now that we open, we still have an income. So we are able to cover the expenses. So uh, I would like to ask. Sorry? 
Sorry about that. It started raining here and my dog was outside. So it's raining really, really, really hard. It's pouring here in North. Yeah, here also. <laughs> um, let me continue. Um, now this Xavier asked about the scanning or QR code. If that was the menu or a redirect to the website, that is the menu, right? Um, yes, actually, this is our menu. I have it. I have one here also. This is the one we use in Fusion. Uh, let me see if I. Can. This is the one we use in Fusion. So we have for the um, beverage and wine menu, and we have for the food menu. So uh, I have this in all the all the outlets. Um, people can easily access. They can choose if they have a a physical menu or the QR codes are on the table. So they can scan and get the menu on their phone or their tablet and uh, make it easy for them. And also I have it on the room service and at the bars. We also did um, over, I just recently did myself for the weddings department, a complete QR code that you can get the different location videos. So you can experience, let's say if you wanna, um, you wanna do your wedding at the hotel and you wanna see the locations, let's say at the, at the, by the beach, we have multiple places that you, we set up for weddings. Then uh, we, they scan it, they can see the videos per location we set up so they, the guests can have an idea. This is being sent to all the brides that will are prospect um, um, customers. And uh, it's also on the hotel that people can do renewal so they can scan the QR code and say, I wanna do my renewal there right now too. You know? So pretty much we, we went to digital all over the restaurants and in the hotel also. This is, uh, this is also a nice move based on your budget and environmental friendliness. So to have less things printed and more right. digital and accessible. Yes, so, indeed. Um, um, I have a question here from Megan, but Ma Megan, do you want to ask a question? So I'm going through the chat. Yeah, I was kind of pouring, so I hope you can hear me well. Yeah, um, I asked. <laughs> I asked in the group chat um, that COVID-19 had an impact on your teamwork. So like, did you empower your employees when the staff was small? Because I know you're, you run like a lot of restaurants. So like, how did you um, manage to deal with that? Can you repeat the question? <laughs> Sorry. Um, did COVID-19 had an impact on your teamwork? So like, did you have to empower more employees when your staff was small? Because I know you have to run a lot of restaurants so you can't be there at every moment. Yeah, I, I actually think that um, uh, it makes things work stronger. Honestly okay. saying, because first, um, as the Tamarain Hotel is still closed, the staff from Tamarain came to work at the DV. So I have, the complete staff from both hotels working in one property and they started to work together. So I mixed them up. So I didn't do like DV works with DV and Tamarain with Tamarain. I make sure I mix them up and um, it created bigger bonds between themselves. Some of them used to work 10, 15 years before in the past and now they're working together. And uh, due to the system that we break up service also automatically um, increased teamwork. You know? So um, yeah, I think it became stronger because before, you know, you work for your own tips. This is your station, you take care of it. Right now you rely on somebody else to take the order, somebody to bring the food, somebody to, to clean the table, somebody to set up the table. So um, yeah, I think thing work became stronger. And also, um, do you manage the beach bar too or is that not part of the Tamarain all inclusive? If I manage to, sorry? Manage the beach to bar. Bars. No, the beach bar be belongs to to DV Village, so oh, we okay, rented okay. out to we rented out the locations to them. Oh, okay, okay. Thank you. You, I you, like managed, to you managed the pool pool bars, right? The, uh, Freddy? Sorry. The pool bars um, are part of your what you of your. Yeah, all, all the bars in DV Tamarain are part of us, but not the beach bar, the one that is in between DV and Tamarain. Yeah. That one is outsourced to to DV Village. Okay. It was a conflict for us. We wanted to take care of it. So we built it for ourselves, but it was a conflict with our customers because be, if we are the owners of the, of the beach bar, then our guests are all inclusive and they say, why do I need to pay there and not there? Okay. So it was a smatter for us to rent it out, 
than to host it because then we will end up with an additional expense instead of an additional revenue. Yeah. Um, Amber asks, what is the key to developing a successful team based on your own personal experience and all these years that you've worked in FFB? So if you I can... think working with them. Excuse me? Working with them. Working with them. Oh, so listening to them, talk. working with them, get their feedback. And, and you know, like I said, I was pretty much always here and um, I'm still always around whenever, you know, as much as I can. And um, you, for, yeah, you might see me changing bulbs, going on top of ladders, fixing stuff, um, cleaning tables, um, name it up. I, I, I'm pretty, sure, pretty much everywhere. You know, I, the other day I was disarming a, a glass washer because I could not wait for maintenance to fix it. So I started disassembling the whole thing and you know, they see that you are there. They see that you are doing this. It's not sitting in an office. Actually, my boss said, I built up that nice office for you, but you're never there. <laughs> I'm never in my office. I'm always on the floor. You know, and he did build, when he hired me, he built a complete new office for me. <laughs> but uh, I'm never there. <laughs> never. I'm, I move uh, pretty much my emails. Everything goes through my phone. And uh, oh, we, we manage a lot through WhatsApp. And um, only when I need to do projects, budgets, and stuff like that, I'm in my office. For the rest... Um, I'm on the go. I'm on the go. I have I, honestly between two hotels and all these restaurants and bars, I can be sitting in an office. Yeah, the hotel is your office. Yes. Yeah. I have the biggest office from from all the managers. <laughs> yeah, um, just this is a theory question, but I'll ask it anyway. Who do you report to? I report directly to the general manager and to corporate. Yeah. So. Um, and because I had here a question from Jane, does the purchasing manager buy in bulk to reduce cost per unit and how do you check quality and ingredients? Um, yes, uh, we, we buy in bulk. So we buy a big amount of products and that's why we were buying in, in uh, abroad. Um, before we buy any product, we send samples, we test them, we try them. If somebody comes with a better offer, we just don't go to the new offer. We, get that product, we try it out. We, even if we try it out and we think it's good, we try it out for a week or two weeks in operations. We let our customers tell you if it's worth it, if it's good. Um, we see if there is any feedback without telling them what's going on. And um, then we make the decision if we change quality or not. But uh, yeah, we buy in big amounts, huge. And the buying in big amount give us the best prices too. And who, who, is, who, is this, who is the decision-making team? Um, the executive chef, myself, the general manager, and the purchasing director. Um, yeah. I have a few more questions. Um, Olga asked, being, being an F&B director, what is your secret to managing so many diverse restaurants and bankers? Um, you know, I think it's just not a secret. Like I said, this is my passion. So I put everything I have in me in there. I just go all out, you know, and, and do my best, you know, and, and talk to all the employees, talk to all our guests, um, work, 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 and work harder. And, um, you know, be innovative. Um, always try to make the job easier for your employees. This is, the this is, I think, the best thing because there are a lot of ways to do something, but you need to find that one that will make it easier for them and that will make it easier for you too, you know? Yeah. And having the employees happy is the key. Yeah. They are the ones who are um, every day with our customers. They are the ones who make the difference. So um, keep them happy. From um, Jay and Hat, this is, let's say, our last question from here. Um, the Jay asked about what is the ADR inclu including the all inclusive? So how do you, the ADR, how do you calculate the ADR for all inclusive hotels? The daily rate? Well, it depends on occupancy, it depends on season. 
Um, you know, the higher the season, the more the, spence, the the better the season. Like Christmas normally is one of the most expensive seasons, so then the prices go high. Um, right now, due to COVID, we have pretty much um, a lot of specials going on, and and yeah, also depends on the room room um, if it's a garden view, a beach view, beach front. Um, you know, so it's based on a lot of stuff, and also the market, um, which season it is, what type of market are we getting in house. Uh, we have pre-made deals with uh, different companies like Tui, Thomas Cook, so they get a rate. So um, it, it's it depends on a lot of factors. So it's difficult to just give you pick point one thing because we might want to close a deal for five million dollars with Tui, and for us to make it, we need to lower our rates and and um, yeah, make it happen. And then we see if it's worth it or not. Yeah. Um, depends also, we used to get from, let's say, two, we used to get, get um, two planes a week, completely for us. The charters from, yeah. from Scandinavia were there? Uh, that's um, two is um, England. Oh, yes, yes, UK. And so two planes a week and um, yeah, they stay for two weeks. So it's a lot of business there. So yeah, sometimes we need to lower our rates in order to get that. Um, but we always have uh, how much can we lower it and, and because you remember that you're paying for something that also includes your food and beverage and your activities and you know we have all these amenities in, 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 in place in the hotel which you know it's, it's a, either way it's a, it's a good deal people get really good deals with us and um, this I'll, I'll combine um, these are a few questions but I'll combine it um, yeah you're the FMB director um, how you, in the question, one of the questions was, that was asked was, how do you keep your team motivated? And in the same line, um, how, how do you prepare them with training or how do you go through with training for them to maintain the quality as well and to motivate them? Uh, we, we do constant trainings. Um, I, uh, I dare to say that monthly we have something going on. It could be from a small wine training to certain, uh, certain outlets to um, dealing with uh, complaints to, uh, so we try to keep trainings constantly because for us, the quality is the, one of the most important things. We really need to make sure we keep quality on service, keep quality on food. We, so we, we do our utmost on that part. My, uh, my right hand, which is our FMB operations manager, uh, he have a background in trainings. So we do a lot of our own trainings in house. So uh, we sit together, we come with um, materials, the training materials. We sometimes we bought training materials from abroad and just give, give um, these trainings or experiences. Like I'm, I'm a um, WSAT uh, certified wine um, expert. So I have a level two in wines and I give a lot of wine trainings myself. I don't, I don't, we don't outsource this. Maybe I combine it with a brand. So I call, let's say one of the wine companies and tell them join me. And we do it together. So if we want to move this brand, and so we do a combination between the company and myself. Um, how do I keep them motivated? Like I said, constantly talking to them, give, telling them what's going on. We do um, all of our reviews. We uh, print them out. We let them see how the guests actually come to them, what they say. Every time that they mention one of them, they get um, uh, a token. We have a token program in house that uh, each token have a value of five gallons, and you can change it uh, whenever you want. Actually, for gasoline vouchers, cinema tickets, um, dinners. Um, so you know, we 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 do a lot of programs to keep them um, encouraged to to be motivated, and we talk a lot to them, and um, we do a lot of uh, outings, team building, team team building outings, uh, exercises. Uh, HR is also involved in this most of the time, so we really try to do as much as we can. It's difficult through an operation that is open uh, pretty much the whole day, and uh, but it, it's not impossible. It is difficult, but not impossible. Thank you, Freddie. I don't know if there are any questions that you really, really wanted to ask um, students. This is the last round. I wanted to ask the students. <laughs> Who of you is going to go on food and beverage or banquets? Anyone? Actually, actually um, I 
but from ex from my experience um, in the um, food and beverage industry when I did my internship there, um, I like it for the idea of working long hours. It's uh, it sounds crazy <laughs> because um, as you say, like you work from uh, six in the morning till eight thirty at night. Like, do you really have time for yourself and your family? And how do you manage that? Yeah, you know. Um... It also comes on the person. I have managers that don't work more than me. There's the managers that work eight hours and they go home. You know, um, I have a higher responsibility. I, I'm, it's not one building, it's two hotels. You know, it's completely two different management team. It's completely, it's an all-inclusive program. So we know we're gonna be busy every day. So in my scenario, I need to do it. I, knew, I needed to do it. Um, but um, if you become a manager in a restaurant that operates from 4 to 12, then I don't foresee that you will be doing 12, 14 hours, maybe here and there one week of another. But um, for my scenario, this is, is kind of a, a need to be there. And for sure for myself, because I wanted to make sure that the quality goes forward. So I need to be checking and double checking. And, and that, but. It depends where you go, which company. Some companies don't allow over time, even. I think mostly, let's say, um, mm -hmm. um, my sister works at the Marriott, and even before that, they said she cannot work over time before COVID. Mm -hmm. So some companies, uh, my wife worked at the, at the Hilton, and uh, the GM said, it's not healthy for the employees to work more than eight hours a day. I think my GM and his GM need to have a talk. <laughs> <laughs> that's true that's true actually that's very encouraging um, but do you actually have day off yes yes i do even though the my phone is uh, always on and i get calls on my off date i try as much if it's um, not needed i will pass it through to my uh, right hand and i will say contact uh, this department i need this or accounting is in need of this report please run it for me um I went uh, last year for a month on vacation. Uh, I spent a month in Europe. And uh, the only condition that my wife said is put your phone off or leave it in Aruba. I did that. Yeah. It was tough, but I did it. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, at a certain moment, you do get attached, no? You do are checking as uh, something's happening. Let me check. But um, yeah, I, uh, it was, I was able to do that. And everybody took care. And the place is still open. Nothing went on fire. So um, that says a lot. That says that uh, I did something good that they can do the job also without me. You know, we, yeah. I never try to keep the work um, like a secret. So what I do, I'm transparent. So my assistant knows how to do it. The executive chef knows how to do it. And uh, we work, again, we work as a team. We work together. So um, I wasn't here, they manage. Yeah, so you empower your employees, I would say. Of course, of course. Okay. All of them. I like to see them grow. And even if it's not with this company, if they want to grow and they, they get an offer at another hotel, I would tell them, this is what you need to do. You know, check your interview, prepare this, do this, do that. And I, I want to see them grow. I don't want to see them staying there. Okay, that's good. Thank you. Uh, so I'll plant, I'll plant a seat with the, with the last question. Freddie, are you involved in um, the process of hiring, um, of the hiring and internship? Yes, I am. I am uh, fully involved. Um, I pretty much, I either I scout the employees that I want to have or they apply um, through the selection. I'm part of the selection team, which is HR myself and the manager of the outlet that needs the employee. Uh, the manager will interview the, the, the employee, then he will interview it together with HR, and then I will do a meet and greet before hiring. So when all the process is done that they say, this person is gonna be um, our new supervisor or our new server or bartender, uh, before he even gets the signature, uh, I need to meet and greet. And I, I will say yes or no, or double check on this, check the background, and then, then this person will get hired on. Okay. You know, and on the internship goes through me and, and then I send to HR. Okay. 
So for the ones that are interested in a internship, um, I can share, I can, um, Freddie, share your contact sure. info. Go ahead. So I can share your, the contact info so you can uh, work on your process of internship. So, so as you know, I, Freddie is um, passionate, so um, if you really, really want this, you, this is the first step to step, um, your first step in the door. Dorshan? Yes, sorry, may I add, may I, may I also drop a little seed in that ground as well? Maybe this is not the platform for it, but are you looking for any part-timers right now for three hours at least? Okay, so <laughs> Maybe. Um, as I said, you know, we have 350 employees in food and beverage right now and uh, our occupancy, even though that is increasing, it's not where we want it. So at this moment, sadly enough, we are not really taking any outside labor or part-timers um, we have quite some of our own employees and some of them are still with limited amount of days working. So before we get to hiring people, we need to increase their working hours. And then uh, our goal is to move them from 80% pay to 100% pay. And then when we get to 100% pay, if there is a need, then we go for outside labor. The only thing I can give you good hopes in there is that if the banquet department gets some business throughout the Christmas season, December, uh, even though that is difficult because of the regulations from the island on, on parties. Um, if we find a way or the limitation get dropped, then we will look for a, a, some part-timers outside labor to help us do the events. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Freddie. I wanna just, for the ones that wanna be on camera, I'll just take one photo before we end the session. So that um, if okay with you, Freddie, I'll share something on Facebook and social media. Sure. Also part of our promotion and our, um, let's say, industry relationship. Okay. So for everyone the picture. on camera, please turn on your camera. Um, yeah. Okay. That's it. We're missing a few. No. Megan Q left. <laughs> okay. Then this is it. Yes. One more time. Megan joined. Okay. Yes. Yes. All right. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. It was my pleasure to be part of your class today, and I hope you guys got a little bit of um, an idea of what I do and how do we um, operate the food and beverage department at the hotels. Um, it was really a pleasure. Thank you for the invitation, Swan. And and thank you, Frank. Um, let me know for the next one. Yeah. All right, Freddie. I mean, um, we did have um, Freddie also in the past helping us with the offsite venue. So at the university, um, two years ago, we hosted a offsite venue. So they took all the operation outside of DV and did it entirely at the university in the gardens. So that is also part of DV's. Um, let's put it their strength of of offsite offside locations so it was, yes, it was yeah. an that was a really nice event where we had the students from the university and the students from epi work together so the epi student pretty much were in charge of the cooking and uh, the university students were in charge of the marketing of the event the um, service of the event the, i think the wine pairing also they uh, yeah. took care so they got some trainings in there yeah. and all the funds were um, sent out to the students itself so we were pretty much uh, uh, doing this link with the university and the school as a hospitality um, students and um, the whole, everything we collected was shared throughout the students who work and participated in this event. Yes, so yes. it's a great partner and thank you once again, Freddie. Really, really appreciate it. Although different, a different kind of site inspection. <laughs> Um, but still very insightful and helpful. Thank you very much. All right. My pleasure. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank you. Um, for the students, um, I'll open a short and easy quiz at 1. So you'll have the rest of the day to prepare and make the quiz. It's chapter housekeeping and maintenance. So no, not difficult. And um, I'll be sharing this 
video for your um, report. So do not go and summarize everything, but think a little and link things back to the theory, come up with your own um, thoughts behind it so that you can share the info, follow the, the guideline that I give. It's easy, so do not go and get me a report of 10 pages, not necessary. It can be a few pages, so it doesn't have to be a very long summary, just a recap and give your own thoughts to it. Um, if there are any questions. What is the minimum page for the report? Yeah, I think with three, three pages minimum would do. Um, if it has to be AP, API, if you want to use the a, APA style, it's okay. So it's just a quick, a quick report. I'm not going okay. to use it on the EPA, APA style, but grammar, I will go through grammar. Too much grammar, she will be losing points. So it is still, it is still a report that you need to take care of that component. Okay. Um, also, and, teacher. Yes. Um, don't forget to share the session with us. Yes, this session. Yes. I will be as soon as I end this the session. I will be saving the recording and then I can share it with you. Um, one more thing. Um, the quiz question: How many points? I think it's seventy-five or hundred. I don't know for sure. I think it's seventy-five. If I'm not mistaken. Um, when it be close? Yes. No, for the for how many points for for. This um, lecture, I mean, is 75 points. The, the quiz is um, 50 points. It, it closes at 11.59 as usual. So um, that would be it. Remember at the end, we have a small essay assignment. I saw some people with interest in f &B or banquet. So I already know the direction. So I really like this. <laughs> so I can get to know you as well. Um, and get another perspective instead of only your um, over theoretical perspective so I can get your perspective as well of how you see the industry. So thank you and two minutes before 1030 so you have a few minutes to relax and enter your next session right. Enjoy the rain, enjoy the day, hot chocolate and marshmallow day it seems so. Have a nice day, have a nice weekend, and we'll meet you back. I'll send the I'll send a recording as soon as it is recorded. Okay. Thank you, teacher. Thank you. Thank you. Thank for you. Bye. Bye. Thank you, teacher. Have a nice weekend. Have a nice day. You too. Bye.